Welcome to Hudobna Dielnia of the magazine Hudobni Život. My name is Daniel Chachia, and uh, I'm uh, really happy to be part of this little project where I can uh, share with you a couple of uh, my insights when it comes to singing, when it comes to soloing, and uh, I hope you like it. The song that I'm going to perform for you is called On the Sunny Side of the Street. Grab your coat and grab your hat Leave your worries on the doorstep Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street Can't you hear that bitter path And that happy tune is your step Life could be so sweet On the sunny side of the street I used to walk in the shade With my blue on parade but I am not afraid cause it's over Casanova if I never had a cent I'll be rich as Rockefeller gold dust at my feet on the sunny side of the street da 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 I got a bit of a day out. But I put a bad way. 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 All right, well, that was the solo that I have uh, written out for this song. And now I would like to explain a couple of things that, that I, was, um, I was using. And the first line starts uh, with an ascending movement. It's going up. And um, it includes some chromatic approaches. And also, at the same time, it's pretty diatonic because it always points to the um, third, to the terza, right, of the chord, most of the time. And this chromatic approach is creating a tension as well as the ascending movement. So if you have this. Da 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 You see, and it's and it's pointing at a third, always at going at a third, so it's pretty pretty diatonic and it's pretty much playing the harmony da, 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 da. so it's going from terza to terza and um, these 
little notes that you see in brackets, and you will see that in the magazine. You can find the transcription in the magazine. Those are some ghost notes that you don't really sing, but it's just like you're, hi you're just hinting uh, at, at uh, these notes. So it's like, so it's not da 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 but it's just da 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 yeah and it continues diatonically da 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 and then this is like the first big statement and it's very important when you start of solos that you start with clear statements. Because soloing is basically like telling a story, also as singers. And we, as singers in jazz, we have a pretty instrumental approach to soloing, or we should have uh, an instrumental approach to, um, to soloing. And it should be clear rhythmically, and it should be clear um, melodically. So that's the kind of the first big statement in, in, the, in the first eight bars. And then I continue with some kind of motivic playing. I'm like using a motive and um, uh, sequencing the motive, putting it in another place and adjusting it to the harmony. So it's like da 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 So it, it, it first you know, I'm hitting the fifth of the C major chord, and then I'm uh, hitting the major third of the E7. And I continue this line, and I'm uh, developing it into a pretty, pretty nice traditional language that you hear. And, you know, we artists, we are, um, have the best ideas when we kind of steal them from other artists and then put them in our own context. So this is, this is just a very, very typical line that is used, uh, you know, it's not my invention, I'm just kind of echoing the, the jazz language, which is just like, you know, it's like pretty, pretty, pretty standard jazz language. And then it, it, it goes on with um, It's also a beautiful line. I really like this line. I, I transcribed this line many times from different saxophone players like uh, Dexter Gordon or Sonny Stitt and so on. Then I continue. I, I go into bar 13 and I am um, singing an arpeggio that is leading to a second step that is dominant. And this is, in the jazz tradition, pretty common to use a mixolydian sharp 11 scale. So if you have the second step, if you have the second step as a dominant, you usually um, use like, um, Mixolydian sharp 11, which would be like. All right. And I'm just also combining uh, the scale, or actually, I am, I am uh, playing some traditional lines as well. You know, it's like pretty. Just one octave higher, you heard already in the solo. And then I kind of bring it down, bring it back to the tonic. You know. Sorry. You know, like finishing it up. And then we start, we start a new part, which is now rhythmically a little bit different. From the, from the from the beginning from the rest because it was a lot of a lot of eight notes. Of course, we are we are swinging the eight notes, which means we are approaching the eight note uh, over a triplet note. 
You know, it's like do ba do ba do ba do ba do da do da do da do da do ba do ba do. It's not straight. It's swinging. And so, from pretty much um, many eight note uh, motifs, I'm switching into like a 16 note, um, a two bar 16 note phrase where I'm basically also using just a bebop scale. And it's like. <laughs> And a bebop scale is if you, if, if you relate it to the second step um, is being approached, the third, the minor third is being approached with a major third. And if you um, apply the bebop scale to a dominant scale, then uh, the dominant seven is approached by the major seven, which would be like, That's 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 a that's a bebop scale, basically, and I just transformed it a little bit, you know. Like <laughs> and then I'm moving on with an eight-note dominant, and an eight-note dominant is a pretty interesting scale for me because first of all, it has it has eight notes, and second of all, it it, it has uh, nice tensions. I like the tensions sharp eleven and and, uh, and uh, sharp nine and uh, flat nine. So, and then I'm basically just following one motive, um, creating a tension with these tensions, of course, and then releasing it uh, again into the major third of the F major chord. So it's like. All right? So that's over the C dominant. And the scale itself would be like this. You know, you have eight notes in the dominant scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then again, the root note. Yeah. And then I'm playing around a little bit. You know, you also uh, have to have some fun. It has to be playful. Especially when you're soloing, I think you should, you should be soloing according uh, to the atmosphere of the song. So if the song is bright, if the song is, if the song is like uh, uh, a happy tune, uh, you, should, you should include some nice, um, some nice uh, uh, happy melodic statements um, and, uh, um, and you should have some fun with it, you know. And in bar 21 and 22, um, I'm also using some uh, bluesy lines, you know, like, let me just see. That's like pretty bluesy, pretty standard stuff. And um, I'm introducing the last A with an arpeggio. basically like terza on terza on terza on terza on terza you know and then I'm creating this tension from the flat 13 and sliding it up to the major third of the next chord The tension continues because I'm, because I'm singing the flat nine of the next chord. And if you recognize, I am um, making a reference to the original melody, which is also like a stylistic means that you can, that you can use. It's uh, it's pretty effective, you know. Just basically to remind. Uh, the audience, all right, we're still in the song on the sunny side of the street or whatever song it is. And um, that's what I'm doing here, reference to the original melody. And I continue 
with the following line, or basically I'm ending the solo with the following line. And if you recognize it, I was quoting a very famous standard called Doxy. And this is also very common in, um, in soloing. Uh, of course, to do that, everything on the spot, you should have quite a lot of experience in soloing. You should transcribe a lot, uh, especially for the singers. You should transcribe instrumentalists. You should not transcribe singers. Uh, because from the instrumentalist you will learn the language, learn the songs, learn the repertoire, the phrasing and everything. So I'm ending the song with a quote of Doxy and basically I'm taking it back home um, to the tonic. Yeah, um, that's it. I hope I explained everything. I think I did. And yeah, the, the most important thing, if you do these things, I don't know, probably um, you piano players or whoever is listening, you probably uh, heard of Bill Evans. Uh, he's a very famous jazz piano player. He was composing a lot of his solos. You know, he was composing it at home and then just adjusting it in the concert situation. So. Um, also, for practice purposes, it's, it's very good to, to compose solos. Of course, at some point, you should be just uh, improvising and you should be, you should be as creative as, uh, as possible and uh, uh, as spontaneous as possible. But most of all, I think you should have fun with the tune. You should have fun with the tune and you should, you should uh, serve, serve the, the atmosphere of the tune and you should transport the message also with your solo. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it helped you with some things, to clear up some things. I hope you learned something. And um, yeah, just maybe try that at home uh, on your own and uh, have fun with it. All right, thank you and see you hopefully soon in Bratislava. <laughs>